Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be speaking about CVs and CV trends specifically for 2023. And these are trends that um, have been noticed as a result of the change in work style, or things like remote working, the demands that employees and also employers are making um, upon the working conditions and the kind of things that they're looking out for. So I've got nine trends to go through with you today. So let's just get right into it. Number one, and I mean, this is one that you can probably, I don't have to tell you, and that is remote working. Employers want to see that people are able to work remotely and have the tools and skills to be able to re work remotely. But more so, employees are also asking for work to be able to be remotely, like a balance, not just 100% working from home, but also the, the, the ability to decide and the ability to choose and have more of a kind of 50-50 work at home and also work in the office balance. And so remote working is something that should be really highlighted in your CV in some way. Now you don't have to state it explicitly and say, I can work remotely, but something like, you know, you have the fact that you have the tools, like you know how to use Zoom. And I know there's really obvious things, but there are people that don't know how to do these things. So being able to use remote tools, um, things like using Asana, um, tools that allow for like project collaborations, tools that allow for um, other, like you, let's say you have clients, clients to see what you're working on, anything that means that you are able to work remotely without the need of for in-person or face-to-face -face interaction, include that in your CV and make it really clear. Okay, the second one is trying to bypass ATS. Now, if you've been applying for jobs or if you know like how the CV resume whole you know platform works then you probably know about ATS and that is automated tracking system which is used by a lot of, quite a lot of top employers um, to be able to sift through the CVs that come through automatically using an online system before the point that they have to use a human and ATS use key, uh, keywords they scan like for keywords that are linked to the job profile and the kind of person they're looking for which is um, which is why you want to think about ATS when designing and writing your CV. Now there's two things, you don't want to jam pack your CV to the point that it's full of keywords, but you also don't want, you also want to make sure that it does include some keywords that the employer would be looking for and would be highlighting um, that they would want a CV to include. So always make sure you do these things. Number one, you're matching your CV to the job description. So th the worst thing you could do is just send blanket CVs out um, to the, to different jobs, just the same CV. Always make sure it's tailored. If that particular CV is looking for someone that has teaching experience, make sure you've highlighted and you've pulled out the teaching experience and you're not really including things that are irrelevant to that. If your employer, potential employer is looking for a specific skill or knowledge in a specific area, make sure that your, the, the things that your experience that you're including are to do with that particular area. Also make sure that your font, the font that you're using is screen friendly. So keep it clean, don't keep, don't try to make it fancy. Keep it as clean as possible. Use standard font like Arial, Times New Roman, just keep it clean. Also make sure that when it comes to abbreviations, you're using not only the abbreviated word, but also the long form word. So let's just say that the employer is looking for a particular term and you've abbreviated it and haven't added the long form, your CV is in the bin. So make sure that you're adding them both within your CV. Third, um, use AI to your advantage and I'm not sure how much you guys know about AI when it comes to the CV world but there are a ton of websites that allow you to upload your CV and they'll give you advice on what to include whether it's going to pass um, you know, the ATS or a particular job or whether you know it, it's good enough basically and this is all done by AI. And even things like ChatGPT, ChatGPT allows you to um, fix your language and maybe use different synonyms or maybe use language that's a bit better. So you can very much, very easily just stick in like a description and say, can you write this in a way that shows that I was like involved in this task and it will write it for you. So not only can you use actual AI CV websites, but you can also use AI to help you tailor your CV and make it sound better. I also personally have a CV slash LinkedIn audit service whereby I look at your CV. A human looks at your CV and I also look at your LinkedIn and I match it and I look at job descriptions that you are particularly interested in and I give you feedback on that and I'll leave the link for that audit down below if you're interested. It is me that does this. Um, I've done hundreds and hundreds of CV LinkedIn audits 
um, pretty good at spotting a good one. The next tip for 2023 is being really specific and having multiple versions of your CV. Now, one thing that I know, like I said before in the past, we lots of us would just send CVs out to different jobs, different employers and hope for the best. It is like employers are awake now, like they, they know what they're looking for. They know if you've just sent a blanket CV out. They know if you've done your research, they know if you've included the right information. Like it's everything is so advanced now that you, we also have to advance ourselves as well as a result of that. So making sure that you've got different versions of your CV for different job roles that you're applying for. Even if you're applying for the same company, but a different role, it, your CV should be tailored for that particular job description and that particular role. So just making sure that if you're like, if you have a particular role, look at your CV and say, right, does it match it? If yes, good. If no, add some more keywords, add some more experience, add some more really like, um, like tasks that you've done, experience that you've done. Make it specific, make it personal. The next tip is that you want to make sure that you're always quantifying your metrics within your CV. Um, it's one thing to say you, was, you were involved in a project that was a $5 million project for X you know, client. But what did you do? Because you could have just taken the notes of the meeting. Well, what, did you, what exactly did you do? And that is where it's really important. Like I did this part, like I was involved in um, speaking to 20,000 people. I made 10 phone calls. I like, what specific thing did you do within that project? And you want to really quantify everything. So it should be numbers. There should be numbers going all throughout your experience saying how much was involved money wise. How many people did you, did you speak to? What was the outcome? What were you able to do in terms of numbers? I want to see numbers and so does your employer. And I know this sounds really obvious, but most people don't most people don't add metrics and so when you add those metrics there you really do stand out we live in a bubble where i hear this quite a lot and i think i feel like everyone does this but people don't people don't add metrics they just say that they were involved in x y and z and so adding metrics and saying that this is what you've done makes such a difference because you will stand out it shows the potential employer that you will be making a difference in their company the next one this is again another obvious one prove that you are competent with technology and if that technology is specific to your job that you're applying for in your field even better show that you know how to use technology the last like honestly i know this is really bad but the last thing that i want when i'm trying to hire someone is to teach them how to use microsoft word to teach and i and i know part of the job sometimes is to teach people but employers are not here to teach you how to use technology that they need for their job so if they want a particular and they've mentioned they've mentioned it in their job description that that is what they want they want someone who is competent in using python add that into your competency list and not just say python but say competent like have like a scale very common you know like you have your ha how you have like you are intermediate beginner advanced whatever fluent um in a language for example like have have like maybe levels that show that you are really good at this you're so you're, you're okay with this you you've touched this like have some sort of like chart maybe some sort of level to show that but technology you have to show that you have competency especially if it's required within the job some really um interesting ones for to look out for, for 2023 are things like ai um, automation digital marketing seo these are all areas and aspects of um, different businesses that if you're able to say, right, I can use AI to turn your business around. I can use digital marketing and social media SEO to get you an online presence and engagement. I can, I've done this and I've used X, Y, Z. That's amazing, especially for 2023. Next is to update your socials and your LinkedIn profiles within your resume. So don't forget that now everyone has, like, most people have LinkedIn and most people have like, you know, online social media pages. And if that is linked to your job, add that link into your CV. I love it when I get a CV and a LinkedIn is there because I just click on the LinkedIn and I'm like, oh, okay. And I can find out more about the person more than what's actually in their CV. And that gives me an, a more, like a better understanding as to the person and whether they would fit into my company. And so it's so important that you are able to like link that in. It makes the, it makes the, reader um, your potential employer's life so much easier and i think it's quite impressive but be careful audit your social media audit your linkedin if you're liking posts that are maybe not that great if you're commenting on posts in not a very nice way 
um, then that doesn't look good either. So make sure that anything you present on the outside world in the public domain is something professional and something you'd be happy for any employer to see. Next one, number eight, is to highlight any transferable skills. So any skills that you may have from one job that you're able to bring into another job. Um, you know, we, I think a lot of us now don't stay in a particular job for very long. You know, years and years ago, people would stay in jobs for the same job for like 30, 40 years from when they start work until when they retire. They'll be in the same role and that's fine. They'll just move up the chain. Whereas nowadays, most people are in a job for no more than five years. So you'd move from one role to a different role. And a lot of the time it's in different companies, slightly different roles, different jobs, maybe even completely different industries. So you need to show that your skills are transferable. You've taken a skill like team working, analytical thinking, project management, you can take it from there and bring it into here. It's okay to change jobs, like it's accepted nowadays, everyone does it, but how do your skills actually like relate? How can you take it from here to here? And um, this year, some of those skills that recruiters are really looking for are things like communication, customer service, time management, project management, analytical thinking, working independently, um, collaboration, flexibility, attention to detail, and also multitasking. All right, last but not least is the format of your CV. This year, and you know, I would say, I would say more, more modern CVs have been kind of tried to, be, um, people try to be creative, people have tried to be a bit fancy, um, using Canva, you know, using like really cool themes and fonts, etc. Back to basics, please, this year. Back to basics. We don't have, like, recruiters do not have time, employers do not have time to try to figure out what order to look at your CV in. If it's for a design job, maybe, yes. If it's for a specific portfolio job, yes, maybe. But if it's just for an academic role, if it's just for a corporate role, your CV does not to need to look pretty. It just needs to be informative and have the right information down on paper. So make sure that it has the right subheadings. It's just a standard CV layout. You know, you've got your name, academic achievements, experience, and you know, interest, and like that's it. You don't need anything more than that. You don't, it just needs to be fancy. Keep it plain and simple and boring. Just show off with your achievements. That's what I would say. Show off with the things that you've done. That will be a highlight and that will be the beauty of what your whole CV is about. And if you enjoyed this video, then if you want to see more from me as well like this, then don't forget to press the subscribe button and don't forget to yeah, like it. You want to see more from me? Um, leave me a comment down below as well. Have you noticed a change in like what recruiters or what people are saying to you about CVs or about um, how recruitment is going in the past kind of year or past six months or so? Um, if yes, then leave me a comment down below. I'd love to start a discussion. And yeah, I'll catch you next time. See you later. Bye.